Welcome! Today, we're going to walk through LeetCode 2857, counting pairs of points with distance k. In this problem, we're given a list of 2D coordinates, and we have a twist in that we define the distance between points as x1, xor, x2, plus y1, xor, y2. And given this definition of distance, we want to see how many unique pairs of points in our array have distance equal to k. So our immediate reaction might be to first do an n squared algorithm, where we iterate over all possible unique pairs of coordinates and check their distance. But let's take a quick look at the constraints of the problem. The length of coordinates can be anywhere from 2 to 50,000. The coordinates themselves can be from 0 to a million. And k can be between 0 and 100. So if we do an n squared algorithm, the cost is going to be quite, quite costly. 50,000 squared is pretty substantial. It's 2.5 billion permutations to check, and they might give us a time limit exceeded error. So that's a sign that we should at least consider some other approaches first. To understand the linear solution to this problem, let's pretend that instead of looking for pairs of 2D coordinates, let's pretend we're working in the one-dimensional space where we only have x coordinates, and we're looking for two x coordinates such that x1, x4, x2 is equal to k. Does this problem sound familiar? It should. Searching for two numbers that have an xor equal to some target value is basically the same as two sum, where we're looking for two numbers who whose addition is equal to some target value. Why is that? Well, let's briefly recap. The optimal solution to two sum is to create a map that maps the values you've seen so far in the array to the number of times each of those values has occurred so far. Then, at each element, you check whether target minus the current element is present in your array. For example, if your target sum is 5 and your current element is 2, you check whether you have seen a 3 previously, because 2 plus 3 equals 5. The XOR prop the XOR operation has similar properties to addition and subtraction that we can utilize. In case you're not familiar, 0 XOR1 is 1, 1 XOR1 1 is 0, 0 XOR0 0 is 0, and 1 XOR0 0 is also 1. So if X1 XOR X2 is equal to K, then we can actually XOR both, of, both sides of this equation by K and X2 to derive the following x1 xor k is equal to x2. So as we iterate through the array, we can store the elements we've seen so far in a map similar to two sum, mapping the element to the frequency of that element in the array, and then we simply check whether the xor complement of the target is present in the map. In two sum, the complement of the target that we're looking for is target minus the current element. In this problem, the complement of the target that we're looking for is target XOR, the current element. But of course, this is not the problem we're solving. We're solving for coordinates in two dimensions. So how do we adjust our approach? Well, if we're solving for X1, XOR, X2 plus Y1, XOR, Y2 equals K, then we can call the result of X1, XOR, X2 some unknown value J. If x1, xor, x2 is j, then we would want to look for a corresponding y1 and y2 whose xor results in k minus j. And now, similar to before, let's solve for the complement. So this is nice. x2 and y2 are isolated on one side of the equation, which is what we want since we can now solve for the coordinates that we're looking for, whose XOR with the current element will give us K. X1 and Y1 will simply be the current element that we're iterating at, so we know those values. We also know K since it's passed in, but we don't know what J is. J is just some unknown value that we defined at the XOR of X1 and X2. Well, it turns out here that we can utilize the fact back in the constraints that k is only between 0 and 100. If x1, x4, x2 plus y1, x4, y2 is equal to k, then the unknown value j 
must be some value between 0 and 100. 100 is a pretty small amount to iterate through, so we can just try every single possible value between 0 and 100 and check our complements in that way. In pseudocode, we'd have some running result. At each index in our iteration through the array, we'd iterate from 0 to k and check at the tuple x1 xor j, y1 xor k minus j is present in our map. If so, then we'll add that value to our result. Let's jump into the code now. Let's first initialize our running result to 0, and let's create an empty dictionary whose keys will be coordinates and whose values will be the number of times each of those coordinates has occurred in the array so far. Next, let's iterate over all coordinates in our array. For each element, let's iterate over all possible ways that k can be split into two numbers. In the pseudocode, we called this variable j, but let's call it split so its intent is clear. Then, for each possible split, let's now calculate the complement for x and y that we discussed earlier. The complement for x will be x xor split, and the complement for y will be y xor k minus split. We'll then add the number of times this complement has occurred in the array to our running total. Finally, we'll store the current coordinate in our dictionary and increment the count for this coordinate since the dictionary records the number of times each coordinate has occurred. Now, let's return the result and see what happens. Cool, and now let's submit our solution. And that's how you do this problem in linear time. I'll see you in the next video.